YouTubes and Instagrams, Stefan Hyron, irondpc.com, bringing you something a bit different this week, the tennis serve, and it's going to be a biomechanical analysis. Complex, it's a complex issue. Tennis serve isn't easy, and it takes my students a long term to learn it, and it takes years to perfect it. When I was a kid growing up back in Italy, every day I'd bring a basket of balls to the tennis courts and practice my serve. And it took a long time to get it right. I think the first year that I actually started doing proper serves, I just did a big topspin serve, just trying to figure that out. Once I got that down, that became my second serve. And it became a very consistent second serve and allowed me to experiment with new things for my first serve. So we're going to be talking about the uh, psychology of the serve, coordination, stance, timing, uh, flat serve, topspin serve, slice serve, and the biomechanics of that, right? Upper body rotation, leg propulsion, ball toss, uh, vertical movement, and tactics. Uh, so the psychological. You'll see a lot of rituals that tennis players, professional tennis players, will utilize before the serve. Novak Djokovic was notorious for bouncing the ball for about a minute, so they started implementing a stop clock to cut that off but he still bounces the ball excessively. Uh, for myself, I bounce the ball just once. I visualize where I'm going to place the ball in my mind, and then I go and complete the serve. There's an old picture of my brother. This is from many years ago. This is more of a recent one in a tournament uh, back, I think, 2020. Uh, we're gonna talk about the next step in this would be the wind up. So the wind-up and the toss happen simultaneously. You see my brother and I both bring our rackets low. So it's going to be a low take back, arm will be lower. As we take the ball back, we're going to toss the ball at the same time. Ball toss. So the ball toss, the different ways to throw the ball affects what kind of serve will result. A toss behind one's back will result in a heavy topspin. A toss out in front is geared more towards an aggressive flat serve. A toss directly above a righty's left knee, as is shown in the picture, is a neutral serve that is generally used for a slice serve. An advanced player can combine any number of toss or angle variation to create a unique serve. I pretty much consistently will always toss the ball a little bit behind my head. This allows me to generate a topspin where the angle of rack comes from behind my head, connects with the ball, and brushes up on it. I also lean into the court, so I will toss the ball out in front of me, extending my hip over the line so that I generate power out in front as well. So it's both tossing the ball behind me and hitting the ball out in front. Uh, the launch of the ball, I typically will keep my palm upwards and keeping the ball in the tips of my fingers. What you don't want to do is flip your hand backwards and create a backspin on the ball. You prefer to toss the ball perfectly neutral so there's no excessive rotation on the ball. Stance. You can see different stances here uh, from myself, my brother, Amadeus, and they're pretty much all the same. Essentially, we have a very similar stance. So the left leg will be out in front, the right leg slightly behind. We do bend our knees quite a lot. Amadeus is bending his knees uh, very much. He's also very tall. He's about six foot one or something. Uh, so most players will have an open stance for the serve, and he will use his back muscles, abdominals, uh, forward-facing obliques, and legs to generate torque. Note how Matias' back is turned away from his uh, opponent. By the end of this PowerPoint, he will have made a 180 degree rotation. Also note the tension in his legs and balls of the feet. Okay, so he has uh, tension there in his calf muscles. He has tension in his feet. Um, so he is already in the, forward, in the upward position. You can see this is kind of an earlier part of the stance and then here I am, my toes off the ground. We call this trophy position. That's because if you ever win one of those uh, plastic trophies in a tournament, they have a guy kind of frozen in place there. The right shoulder is 
low and the left shoulder is high. This creates what I call the ski slope position. Mine is an extreme example, right? You can see, uh, you, could, you could ski off my shoulders there, It'd be uh, a black slope, how steep that is. We're also leaning over the line. I don't know if you saw that there. Uh, yeah, so my hip is over the line there. That creates a lot of tension in my abdominal muscles, obliques, and gives me another source of energy. Leg propulsion, vertical movement, and racket head drop. You can see in each one of our, our positions here, our right elbow is going up at the ball, and we're going up at the ball with the butt of the racket. Our racket is facing straight down, right? We never go at the ball with the racket like this. We always have our wrist backs and we snap up at the ball at the end. The player's leg coil is now propelling him upwards. His racket head has dropped nearly so low as to hit his buttocks. His chest is open towards the sky, which is a critical tip for players who are dumping the ball in the net. You wanna keep your chest up towards the sky, head up, keeping up until you've hit the ball and then only then coming down. Uh, it's a super con reason, and I'll do it too. I'll hit the, I'll dump the ball in the, in the net, and I'll be like, okay, I, I closed too early. I need to keep my chest more open towards the sky. Rudis is uh, demonstrating that very well here. Chest and head open towards the sky. Slingshot trebuchet. Right, we, these are ancient medieval, uh, pre, I, I, Byzantine weapons. And the physics is the same as the serve, essentially. A common mistake in a beginner is to believe that power comes from muscling the ball. Power and tennis comes from fluid body mechanics and a loose, relaxed grip on the swing. Even though Matias is hitting the ball at over 150 miles per hour regularly, his grip on the handle is not tight and his arm swing is loose, like an ancient sling warrior throwing a stone. To achieve chest power, Matias' left arm is pulling downwards and his obliques and abdominals are pulling forwards to create a counterweight effect. At the same time, his leg muscles are propelling him upwards as his torso and hips rotate 180 degrees. So just like the catapult, right? you have a lever up here or you have a, a fulcrum up here, you're going to pull this down as the load comes up. right? counter lever and this through a whole time unlike the catapult it's not a stiff fulcrum it's a relaxed motion kind of like the baseball player they come way through this way right but instead of coming through this way we are going upwards so it's a blend between the slingshot and the catapult you can think of our arm kind of like a whip coming through the ball the wrist snap Right? So this is probably the most critical step. It's relaxing that wrist and coming up at the end and flicking through the ball. That's where all that energy we've been assembling through this entire process meets the ball. Um, you need to have a relaxed wrist. You can see my wrist here, very relaxed. Rack is down here and then at the end, pop, comes forwards. Matisse is demonstrating that pretty well here as well. He could be extending a little bit better with his torso. He is shrinking a little bit on that one. Here, I am a little bit better extended. Follow through. Very important follow through. After connection with the ball, the forward kinetic moment, movement should send the player into the court. The racket should end under the left arm of the right armed player. So if we're leaning over the line very well, that energy is going to send us a couple feet into the court, and that's normal, and that's good. I am landing on my left leg. I always land on my left leg, I should point that out. And Matias is as well. Typically, if you are hitting a tennis ball with that closed stance, you're going to be landing on the left leg, and the right arm is going to be under the left arm, right? Very critical that you don't hit your shin. I've done that before. It's super painful. You definitely want to make sure that racket is going under the left side. So what to take away from this? Shoulder rotation. So huge shoulder rotation. You can see Matias tossing the ball out to his left side there. Good shoulder rotation. So keep that back turned to towards the opponent in order to generate rotation. No stiff wrist. 
keep everything loose, so tightening the grip uh, is not a good idea. Uh, you may want to keep a fresh overgrip. I've broken several rackets trying to be cheap on an overgrip. Boom! That racket goes into the ground at 100 miles per hour. It's shattered. There goes the $200 racket. It's been, <laughs> I've probably broken $1,000 worth of rackets that way. Uh, bend the knees to generate power from your legs. Keep your chest up it, as you go up towards the ball. And um, keep relaxed. Right? You're not going to generate power by stiff arming the ball and hitting it like that. Now you'll see a lot of novice players out there on the tennis courts doing that. Right? Or standing completely facing their opponent and hitting the ball like that. You won't really progress beyond a basic serve if you do that. Um, hope you all enjoyed this lecture. I'll see you out on the tennis courts.